Legal notice was hereby given of the special meeting of the mayor and board of all the persons for the city of Bastrop this Thursday, October 15, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. in the courtroom at City Hall. First, we're going to have our call to order. I mean, this is our call to order, rather. Um, invocation, we're gonna ask uh, Councilman Shaw to lead us with the invocation. We're gonna pause for a moment of silence for those who are grieving and going through so much during this, this, these trying days. Um, and then I'm gonna ask Mayor Pro Tem Councilman Prater to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, shall we stand? I have a father who comes to you tonight with heavy hearts with all that we're having to deal with or day to day, but we're so thankful that no one has lost their life that we know of, and we uh, appreciative of everybody's input, all the work that's being done, all the first responders and essential workers and everything, Lord, we just pray for you to continue to protect them as they go through this process. Lord, we are honored and I give you praise for all you do for us, and we love Amen. you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Salute, flag, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Goldman, roll call, please. Mr. Shaw? Here. Mr. Prater? Here. Mr. Locke? Here. Ms. Moore? Here. May we have a quorum? Mr. Green is not present at this moment. This meeting is now in session. Um, we're going to do a, an announcement. We're going to do a reading of an announcement as required. We have a timeline. As you know, we are attempting to, to um, settle a longstanding issue with uh, 32 of our finest. Some have fallen, some are ill, and some are Uh, would you tell him I'm the mayor? Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Um, so um, this is an announcement, and we're going to read it. The announcement is, notice is hereby given in accordance with Section 19.1 of Title 42 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950, as amended, that the mayor and board of aldermen of the city of Bastrop State of Louisiana acting as the governing authority, the governing authority in parentheses, of the city of Bastrop, state of Louisiana, this city, at its regularly scheduled meeting of November 12, 2020, at its regular meeting place, City Hall, 202 East Jefferson Street, Bastrop, Louisiana, at 6 p.m., will discuss and consider adopting a resolution ordering and calling an election to authorize a 10-year, <clears throat> three mill, and let me specify that the millage does not have to be, um, but this was the legal notice and the millage does not have to be stated in this meeting. We're all clear on that? because it's going to be different than three. It's going to be less than three for sure, much less. So, I think yes. No, no. Yeah, but in, let me continue. Let me, yeah, but the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is a reading. We didn't have to specify millage at all by law, but, uh, but since this was the, the public notice, we're going to read it as is, but <clears throat> Please note it's going to be substantially less than that um, mill property tax, which will be used for the purpose of providing additional support to the city of Bastrop Fire Department and upon approval by the qualified voters therein for the anticipated avails of such tax to be rendered into bonds for such purpose. So that's the reading. 
Do we have any public comments uh, as they relate to items on the agenda? Thank you. Um, in the form of announcement, I've got something that's not on. <clears throat> Just want to inform the council and the public that we we'll continue to work with our Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality to, to dispose of debris. Uh, we have a temporary staging site that we had to get a permit for, and uh, we are uh, authorization for emergency debris site on Camel Street and Marouge Road landfill. I have here in my hand the um, the we are activating officially activating those sites and I wanted the council to know the first was to get the permit we got the permits and then to activate so we can take action <clears throat> and we're going to be moving debris from the Camel Street as fast as possible and we're waiting on the governor did apply I mean he did uh, Asked for a declaration that would authorize FEMA support for for us because of Delta, and we're fighting hard to be included in one of the parishes that <clears throat> will receive. Hopefully, uh, I know we qualify and we meet the threshold, especially with Hurricane Delta, which did more damage uh, than, in my opinion, Laura. than Laura. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. yeah. Um, Laura set up a lot of trees, blew over a lot of trees into houses with force, and Delta came and uh, knocked the trees over that were weakened by Laura, and they were pretty easy to, to fall, it seems. So we've got a tremendous, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of debris to remove from our streets and from our, our staging area, our five-acre parking lot on Camel Street that we want to get away from there as quick as possible. Um, item four, I mean item five, revenue expense report, August 2020. Yeah, it's just to be received, no actions required. Is that correct, Ms. Goldman? That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, appointment member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, And, and appoint a member of the Bastard Municipal Fire and Police. An appointment of the Bastard Municipal Fire and Police Civil Service Board. Those two items. Um, we have Miss, um, did we get the letter on Miss? We did. We did. We did, sir. Okay, good. As you know, Ms. Ms. Um, McLean, Janet McLean was serving on the Civil Service Board, and uh, because of her schedule, she could not make the meetings, and she was formerly on the zoning board. So I asked her to, uh, we have a vacate vacancy on the zoning board, and I asked her to go back to her original position. If she was willing to serve, and she was. <clears throat> so I'm... Um, Tend, tend in the name is Janet McLean for for the uh, zoning board. Uh, we all know Ms. McLean. She's a very capable and strong lady. And uh, item seven, Ms. Pat Taylor, would you come up to the microphone, please? Yes. <clears throat> I uh, just that one. You don't have to do any speaking. I just want you to say hello to the. Let me tell you a little bit about Ms. Patricia Taylor Whaler. She's an Air Force veteran, 20, <clears throat> 20 plus years. Uh, she, gradu uh, she finished with, with uh, really decorated in the Air Force. She uh, did a lot of, lot of things. Um, she's got so many specialties and so many degrees. I think she went to, uh, you got your degrees in New York? Uh, yes. Yes. She got uh, a bachelor's and you got a master's degree, is that correct? And, and I left the paper with the, all your credentials. It would have taken me 15 minutes to read your long resume. But uh, she is well-founded in, 
and, and strong enough to deal with matters that, uh, that are serious matters. And uh, is there any councilman who would like to comment on anything between these? <clears throat> Sir? Yes. Well, I just wanted to know if you all had any input, anything. You want? Yes, uh, and she's also a certified teacher after she uh, did so many things. She got her uh, certification and she taught several years. Uh, 23 and a half. 23 and a half, so that's 20 with the Air Force. 20 plus five, 20, 20 yeah, 20, 20 and a half years and uh, 23 and a, as a teacher. Well, thank you for being willing to serve, Pat. Uh, Pat, when we were talking, Pat doesn't know how long that her uh, service will be, but I asked her to fill this seat because it's it's urgent. So we're going to play it by ear. She has she's a volunteer with the Humane Society. She spends a lot of time with animals. How many cats do you have, Pat? I don't Animals, Human Society. Well, thank you so much, and God bless you. Uh, we grew up together. I mean, I'm a lot older than Pat, but we grew up together, and and I've known her um, since she was 14, at least 14, 15 years old. But thank you so much, Pat, and thank you for being willing to serve. Thank you. Oh, I need a motion. Can we couple both of those, or you want to do them separate? Separate. Item six, uh, Ms. McLean. It's been moved by Councilman Locke, second by Council Lady Moore, that this appointment be approved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. The ayes have it. The, the appointment is confirmed. Yes, sir. It's been moved again by Councilman Locke and second by Councilman Mayor Pro Tem Prater that this appointment be confirmed. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. The appointment is made. Thank you so much, lady and gentlemen. Uh, item Patricia Taylor, Taylor Whaley. Whaley, W-H-A-L-E-Y. Okay. Uh, item eight, executive session regarding ongoing litigation. Uh, Arnold Lothar et al. versus the city of Bastrop civil suit number 2008-333. Um, do we have a, do we need a motion for that, Ms. Goldman? Yes, to go into executive session? Yes, sir. It's been moved by Councilman Shaw, second by Councilman uh, Green that we uh, go into executive session. In a discussion, all in favor? Aye. We are in executive session. Mr. A Shaw. quorum? Here. Mr. Green? Present. Ms. Moore? Here. Mr. Prater? Here. Mr. Vox? <coughs> Mayor, all present, and we have a quorum. This meeting's uh, in session. I'd like to thank, the, thank our, our uh, council for a very productive session and thank the council the council uh, for their input um, item nine lady and gentlemen we have permits to operate uh, and dispose of hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of debris we expect to get a designation from FEMA. We're seeking a Category 1 uh, designation. We have a Category B with Hurricane Laura. 
On the category B, we were able to get public assistance, the public assistance designation, which pays, I believe, 75% of the cost or something of that nature of, of, of what we incur. Um, and I, I don't want to get into the details of that, but it wasn't full. And we were seeking, and still with the cooperation of Mr. James Modest and Sheriff, uh, he's the Homeland Security um, head for Mohawk Parish, the Mohawk Parish Sheriff's Department, and Sheriff Tubbs. And they've been working with us, and we're trying to get that designation. And I believe that we were right on the, on the brink of, of showing and proving that we had the debris um, from Laurel. But as we've discussed, Hurricane Delta came and knocked down even more trees than Laura did and uh, devastated homes. I've seen homes with 15 wide foot gaps with two trees in them. And Robert, in your neighborhood, over on Orion and on other streets, uh, yeah, worse, yeah. Um, and. Uh, But anyway, we're seeking um, category A with debris removal where, the, where FEMA will pay for debris. Some cities contract it. Some cities uh, like Hurricane Harvey in Houston, they brought in contractors to contract. I believe that, and we met with the, with the National Guard when Hurricane uh, Laura hit one day after we met with uh, the National Guard um, out of Bastrop and Monroe, the 528th Engineering Battalion. And they were commissioned to help us with debris removal. So we geared toward them assisting. And the next day, we received word that they had been called to South Louisiana because of the horrific devastation down there, which leveled things. Um, and uh, so we were on our own. We haven't received one penny uh, for all the hours that Public Works has been out there uh, removing trees and opening roads and things like that. So the work that we have ahead for our Public Works Department is insurmountable. The debris removal alone are removing all the debris from, from the garment plant parking lot, which is a staging site, to the landfill is going to be a, a real arduous task. But I mean, we put it there so we know how much is there, so we, we know that we can remove it. And the reason that we put it there is because that was the only hard surface that the city of Bastrop had control of. Everywhere else was muddy, and it would have been a muddy mess getting in and out, we couldn't get in and out of anywhere that we control. So I made the decision and I take full responsibility for putting it the only place that we could and that's on the garden plate. But that was no trash. Some people did dump some trash. That was, and some couches that we removed some of that stuff, got rid of it. Uh, but you know, people will be people and do things that's convenient for them and not for the greater good of the community. So we've got to, but we're going to get paid. If the city of Bastrop does it, we're going to get paid for it. We're going to get compensated. I can, if any of you want to know what that compensation, what's allowable for FEMA, but I don't project that we'll lose any money. In fact, I project that we'll probably get paid if we work something out with FEMA so much per cubic yard, we'll probably benefit. I mean, some cities like Monroe really benefited from Katrina. They had probably less money in the in their reserve and their fund balance than the city of Bastrop. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I have a question. <coughs> so, are we talking about yeah. item nine or item ten? Um, no, no, I'm nine. not talking about. Hold it. Wait a minute. I'm setting up to talk about the first item. Okay. So you said hurricane, so yeah. Well, no. Let me. I'm glad you asked. What I was saying was that if our public works department is is commissioned with the task of moving the debris, right? Mm -hmm. We're limited to the number of employees that we have. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh, the burn curtain is, is the next item, item, item uh, 10. 
But I want you to understand that we don't have an army of employees. And we're going to be burning, if you approve the burn curtain, we're going to be efficiently burning, but it's going to take months to get it all done. Okay, so what number nine got to do with number 10? That's, That's a good question. What does number nine have to do with number 10? We're talking about the stress on public works department. We don't get policemen, we don't get firemen out there to, to burn this debris and to move it. Yes, I'm saying if we if we have a lift, other communities played ball this this year. Uh, West Monroe, Ruston, they had tournaments this year. We err on the side of caution if we erred at all, because it wasn't the right thing in my opinion to, because people were not observing the recommendations of the White House to mask up, and people were not observing that. So we didn't have it, but I anticipate that we will. Probably, if things go good, in the spring, be ready for sports. <clears throat> Diddy, I'm hoping that we can open them. Depend that all depends on what COVID-19 is doing. Okay, if it's bad, but if things are good and people mitigate by masking, social distance, washing hands, and uh, you know being careful, then good things will happen. But go ahead, ask your question. Yes, sir. Yeah, it does. It, it's got implements that, that will do. Yeah, yeah, we can remove grass. It removes. No. Well, okay. It's, it's, it has, it has, ten implements depending on what you want to do. Yeah, you can, you got teeth that you can get the grass up. Right. You can degrass the field. <clears throat> You've got grater, and it automatically adjusts. You can operate it blindfold, and one person can do it. And Ms. Moore, that's the point that I'm making. If we have ten people out burning debris, <clears throat> we need to get the ball fields where they'll drain properly now. We do the ball fields in the winter time, when we, when the grass dies. We take those people who were cutting grass and doing that kind of stuff, and we get the ball fields kind of ready, uh, I mean, so it won't be so far in the spring. Cause yeah. when a April. Wait. Go ahead. Miss Moore, do you have the numbers for the lease? Do you have the number for the? We're, that's right. This curtain Wait, hold it. Let, let me. Let, the community right now thinking that we are the. We can do both. No, we don't need both. Why? Not You're not. Well, the mayor is asking we for it. Ball field season comes. Miss so Moore, Liam. when ball season comes, when ball season comes. Wait a minute. God. Uh. <laughs> okay, Mr. Green, you played baseball, right? Have you played on good fields and bad fields? Right. Tell me your feeling when you played on a bad field and you had to try to steal second base. What happened? Well, you know, the, the, the dirt is water. You know, we see some calls and running and flying. Did you, the, the, did you ever feel danger when you played baseball no. on some fields? I mean, on some fields. No. <clears throat> I've played, felt I wouldn't slide in second base. Slide, That's what I'm talking about. Danger and sliding and hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Naturally, the answer that's a great question. How long does it take to prepare a field? Did Ms. Moore, did you watch the video that I sent you? I did, but I'm, right now I'm worried about the limbs. We're going to do the limbs. That's the limbs. That's the whole community's concern. Ms. Moore, we can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. Yes, I'm The laser grazer is chewing bubble gum. During the other week and walk. Miss Moore, that's your, you have a vote, but let, let's just talk about this for a second. What we can do, Mr. Green, and you're asking some very good questions. What this will allow us is one person, instead of six people out there, and it takes six people and sometimes prisoners. You've been there. You, either I'm lying or I'm not lying. So if you shake your head. I'll, 
and we can do this. <laughs> Mr. M Mr. Pro. Well, God, we are, right now we cannot touch these cemeteries. Our cemeteries are in bad shape. No, no, they're not. Yes, we they we just right. did I we just did them last week. When? When? About four weeks ago. That's right. And 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 three weeks ago. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah, go ahead, Miss Lenore. You got to be seen, though. Go to the. Yes. Remember, uh, uh, no, no, uh, St. Joseph. No, the one Adams, yeah. No, well, no, no. Let, let me explain. Let me explain it, please. Let me stay there, Miss Moore, Miss uh, Miss uh, Lenore. In February of this year, we we've always used. You see the red van? Have you ever seen a red van with moors and stuff on the back? Weed eaters. Well, the red van is what hauled the inmates around. We've always, from Mayor Hawkins' days, had trustees. People who were not considered a danger, nonviolent, we've always paid them to come and work, and their job was to ride in that red van, and you'd see it at Memorial, you'd see it at H.V. Adams, you'd see it up here at St. Joseph, you'd see it at Christ Church Cemetery. Those are the four cemeteries we do. <clears throat> Ms. Moore, in February, when COVID hit, it hit the prisons. They locked them down. We couldn't get workers until two weeks ago, okay? We had record rain. Did you, did you water your lawn this year at all? No. Did, you, did you need to water it? No. You know why? Because we had record rains. And just like we had record rains, if you have, you have someone else do your yard? Yes. Okay. Is it a relative or, or is it free or pay? It's paid. Okay, pay. Be truthful with me. Wasn't they glad and smiling because they had to come to you every other week, basically? Exactly. More, that's, their, that's their income. That's right. That's the income. But mine was happy because it rained so much. We had the average rain in August is, is about 2 point, in Monroe it's 3.5, 3 and a half inches. Call Doyle Nelson at the water company. They have a range gauge up there. You'll find that in one day in August, we had a four-inch rain, which is more than a month's worth, in a two-hour period. We've had more rain this year than, than, than any year that I can remember. Normally, grass is dead, and we can stop weed-eating around July and August. The grass grows a little bit, and you have to sprinkle it. We have farmers in Morris Parish, Mr. Prater would know this, that didn't irrigate this year. They didn't have to pump thousands and millions of gallons of water in their corn crops because God blessed them with rain this year. Well, to our detriment, we had prisoners locked up that we couldn't get, okay? And we also had rain that would grow grass six, eight, ten inches in a week. So that's what a uh, best, that's what compounded the problem with the cemeteries. We didn't have the workers because they were locked up and couldn't come. So three weeks ago, we, the sheriff gave us the, they gave us, and first of all, we had prison reform, which released a lot of nonviolent workers for uh, two, about a year and a half ago, starting a year and a half ago. We had a lot of people released. Those were the most nonviolent people who got the release from prison. So of the ones that left, the sheriff has contracts with other, like DG Foods and other places. They had to fill those contracts, but they had to shut down. We couldn't get workers. It was not a reflection on our public works department because this was out of the norm. So <clears throat> is that clear about the cemeteries, what happened? So three weeks ago, we signed a contract 
to hire how many, Ms. Goldman? Four. Four. And those four now are being written around, and all of the cemeteries, I believe, Ms. 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 Uh, Lenore, have we gotten them all yet? Yeah. If you want to know what people think that understand and know, go go to Bassett Feed and Seed and ask Mr. Petrus about the work that he commended the Public Works Department of. They we had an oak tree fall, split in half, and fall and decimate graves in in uh, St. Joseph Cemetery by Bassett Foods. We had the uh, State Attorney General. I contact Attorney General because they have a fund to restore graves and, and that we work with the Attorney General. Even though our crew went in there and I've got it on video, I will file it, I will post it tonight. But our Public Works Department is strapped and they're stretched to the limit. Burning debris is gonna stretch them further. And if you don't give us this machine, you're gonna throw this administration's uh, winter work schedule totally off because we've got to burn hundreds of thousands of cubic yards. We've got to move it, burn it, and a lot of it is still in the street. Uh, five, five, six of it is still on, on roads, on the side of roads and ditches. I think we're ready to vote on this error. Or well, uh, uh, your, your, your point is noted, so please, I know you're ready, so you can just sit on your boat, please. Talk about I, I, I'm the mayor. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking. Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore, I'm the mayor. Ms. Moore, Ms. Moore, if you made up your mind, just, just kind of plug it up, please, if you will. No, I'm just saying, if you made up your mind, you, you won't let me finish. Ms. Moore, Ms. Moore, the mayor's election is, is, is March the 20th. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anyone can run. Anyone can run. I welcome it. But we, how much is this, how much is the monthly? Yes, it's needed over the winter, Mr. So Mr. That's what. Wait. So what you're saying is, I should wait until the grass gets tall in the spring. Wait. Jesus. Wait, wait. We we have other things to cut grass. The machine can do if the machine if the fields to rehab a field. Sterlington, I mean. Uh, Ms. Moore, you have any idea what Beekman paid to do what this machine will do? I, I gave that out last week. Beekman, okay, well, Beekman at the last meeting, Beekman paid $14,100 to do one film. They haven't done it yet. They let the bid. They let the bid. If the machine is, if the field is in decent shape, it could do it on the day with one man riding with a blindfold on. Good. Yes, and, and Mr. 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 Green, it's a great question. We didn't open a swimming pool. Swimming pool costs us over $40,000 to run every year. We didn't spend that money. We didn't open Dotson Park. We had two. No, no, I didn't say that. We have a master plan for parks. That the way you raise, okay, let me give you a scenario. I picked and chopped cotton. One day there was a green, there was a green machine coming down the road on a track to turn backward with two things. Wait, wait, listen, listen. There were 50 of us chopping cotton and this machine came and we looked around and it went down the field and picked the cotton, okay? It was called a cotton picker. It replaced 50 of us Negroes who were doing the field. And it, and it went and it picked all the cotton. We were lucky because it didn't do a good job. It left some cotton in the field and we called that scrapping. So we were paid a higher rate to go and scrap 100 pounds than when the bowls were thick. So this is the equivalent of a farmer getting a cotton picker rather than having 50 people with shovels and rakes. Okay, what we have, what, <coughs> Mr. Green, Mr. Green, haven't you seen people do, uh, work on the ball field. That's right. How many? How many people? A lot of them. The whole team would be out there doing this, wouldn't they? Right. No. 
because we are important with Susan, but when you say we make, you want us to make a decision right now about the machine, then we're not sure the department will open it here. I want to. Then you have $40,000 tied up because we can't use the machine. No. Mr. Gray. I mean, Mr. Uh, Mr. Green. Mr. Green. If you want to tell me right now that we can open the parks right now and play baseball. That depends on COVID. That depends on, that depends on COVID. If COVID, wait, but what you're doing is you're putting this administration in a mode. You want us to make a decision. We're not sure how COVID going to be next year. It might be worse. Then here we go. We're spending $40,000. We'll always have it. Never use. COVID's going to be over. Why would we use it? Because when the parks open, the, the fields will be ready. So what you're saying is, it depends on COVID, Mr. Green. If COVID is good, we're going to play ball. If we play ball, we need to be ready. It doesn't make sense to wait. We have the money. We didn't spend money in parks recreation. There's no rational. Yeah. Yeah. They have to travel elsewhere. If you want to tell me, I'm going to speak to me, that Jesse can hold his tournament. Yes, he can hold his tournament here. Right now. No. Yeah, we're in phase three. We're in, we're in phase three. Look, we're in phase three. Wait, look. We're in phase three. There's no reason why we can't do it now. So why open the parks up? The field's not ready. The park, period. Put the swings back out there. We want to take advantage to do maintenance and fix them up. We'll open them, Mr. Green. In, in, I will, but 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 see. Uh, what you're saying is, what you're saying is, what you're saying is, and I hate that we we can't see the point. What you wait? It's a business thing. It's business. And it makes business sense to buy a cotton picker rather than having a hundred people out there with shelves and holes. We can afford it. We didn't have two employees. We didn't run heat and air conditioning in Dotson Park. The money is there. I'll do this. I'll commit this, that we will get the parks ready. And the minute that they're ready, we can, if we're in phase three, we'll do it. If we're in phase three, we'll play ball. Okay. We're, we're, we're. Okay, if that point happens, then we'll have grass growing. You're messing up our winter. We, we can't do what we normally do in the winter time. Jesus. Help me. No, no, that's not true. We can do Dotson. No, it's not dirt. No, we, we, we're going to get the dirt up. It gets the dirt up. You have two fields right now that have dirt down. That's East Medicine and Carter Park that we can use this machine right now. Before it's Jackson Park, Dawson Park, um, Forest Park, you have to pick up the grass. That's what the machine does. It, it's got teeth that goes. You didn't watch the videos, Mr. Green. It's got teeth that gets. Only on a single discussion. Well, you know, Mr. Locke, I'll shut up. Go ahead. Well, look it up, and I'll abide by it. That's your thinking. Okay. Well, let me state. I'm going to state this. I'm going to state this. What you all are doing, I'm just putting this council on notice. Yeah, what, you, what this council is doing is putting the, the administration who is responsible for getting the work done in a, in a real bad position. Not, this is, I, I'm there, and I'm talking about what it's doing to, to us. Okay? It's putting us who have to get Mr. Gray and get Mr. Jesse and our Parks and Recreation Department. We have five people now. We had 14 in 2017. Okay? In parks. All right? Now, I'm saying give us a cotton picker. Don't, don't send us out there like an Angola chain gang with all shovels and trying to eyeball this because this, this will do. Okay, so that's. These people have to agree. Can we move on? Can we move on? And they can't baseball. 
as soon as we get them, get the machine and get them ready. But we're not playing on unsafe fields. So when, what make it, what make it, what make it not no more safe than was last Mr. year? Mr. Locke, we're getting paid to be here. I, I, I know. Go ahead. Was they safe to play on last year? They weren't the safest. They could be better. Okay. Uh, Well, I'm not going to get a motion out of this council. Well, it's pitiful. No, that. I make a motion that we approve number. Um, we haven't gotten a ten yet. I, I thought you said both of them were the same. I said I was explaining. I was explaining the need for it. I was justifying. I was justifying the need and hoping that people were open-minded. And I see this council is not open-minded nor rational. So, so, uh, okay, so let's, uh, number nine, do we have a num motion number nine? If we don't, it dies for lack of motion. Okay, it died, Ms. Uh, item 10, discussion action, permission to purchase an MG, I mean the M25G, a a curtain destructor, so that we can efficiently burn the debris that this administration has applied to the Department of Environmental Quality to to get rid of the debris in this town so people can uh, get their lives back to normal. It's been moved by Councilman Lady Moore, second by Councilman Locke, that we purchase it. Any discussion? Do we know how much we're talking about? Yeah, it's, only it's about 50. 000. Yeah, it's about 50. You know, it might run a tad, you know, but it's in that range. Okay. All the eyes have it. Thank you for your positive vote on that recommendation from this administration. Uh, is that, do we have a motion to adjourn? It's been moved by Councilman Locke, second by Councilman Shaw. Meetings adjourned.